A new season is upon us and we definitely got off to a bit of a weird start. We had a patch with a re rework to Thanos, which I'm a bit excited about to see where he's going to land with that. We also had a rework to the way the move archetype works overall. Now move will always trigger first before anything else. So definitely in a non move player's favor, things will be a lot more intuitive, but those move players are going to be a bit salty because it really is a nerf to them. We also had some drama regarding a gambit bundle where the variant was replaced almost a month after the bundle came out. And then to top it all off, the untapped track which is the tool that we use to show y'all the win rate and how our decks are performing was not working so for the first time like ever i don't have the stats to show y'all my infinite climb but it's really neither here nor there because the bots always skew the number anyway but what i can tell you the deck we played absolutely crushed and cruised through the ranked we came in at rank 26 so we're going to talk about the deck because you definitely do not want to miss out on this beautiful card back for this season so we are bringing you another great deck that was put together by safety blade who's really been putting the spotlight on the mora and her power so yeah let's just go ahead and get the bad news out of the way first this deck is running several new cards from last season we have the sage the nocturne the namora now i definitely think you could get away with not having sage or nocturne you just play a wolf's bane in place of sage but i don't think i would find myself playing this deck if i didn't have namora now that's not because it's completely centered around her but if you don't have her you're almost back to that whole like old series three deck that everyone plays where you just play the wong then you stack the white tiger and odin you lose the lane with wong because it has no stats in it but then you have the other two lanes full of tigers and there are going to be times that you just do that and it wins but this deck is able to do a lot of other things it's able to win all three lanes if you stack a iron heart or a sage on top of wong you're able to just put stats into the other lanes with a white tiger or anything else and yeah it's kind of overwhelming there's not that much cosmo out there which you have the echo to protect your wong yeah, there's not that much enchantress that much rogue and to be honest you're kind of just left to your own devices so we're going to talk about a few key cards and then we're going to jump into the gameplay footage if you have these cards try this deck out i know a lot of us look at these long on reveal and like man we haven't done that since you know i was a new player no this deck is crazy powerful don't go buy no more to play this i'm just that's not what i'm saying let's make that very clear but if you have these cards my freaking goodness this deck also won us our infinity avatar for last season i got the sexy morph but all right let's talk about a few key cards here so our first card in the list is a very crucial one we have the invisible woman what oh i'm sorry we have echo who is an invisible woman my goodness y'all people can't help but play their crucial game winning ongoing cards on top of echo I don't know if it's because Echo comes out early in the game and then they just overlook her or forget by turns five or six, but the amount of times that it has happened since I started playing this list has just been mind blowing. If you look at this screenshot here, this was my game winning eight cuber for infinite where my poor opponent that I know had to be raging and just throwing his phone played their five power iron man on top of my echo to lose the game i've actually lost track of the amount of times that people have played professor x on top of echo and yes echo is kind of nice to say hey i know you're not going to be able to prof x this lane but her main job here is to protect your wong from a cosmo which to be honest haven't seen one of those in quite a while but she is here for those rare cases then like i said does give you a little bit more flexibility into your lane so that you know that professor x isn't coming down on top of her unless you know your opponent forgets so yeah pro tip don't buy any variants or cool things for echo you want to keep her at the base you want to keep her as invisible as possible now moving on we're actually running three different move cards in the list we have a nightcrawler a jeff and that nocturne and the reason that they are in this list is because we are running namora so what you can do is stack one lane with your cards like ravona ren slayer wong and all that keep a nightcrawler keep a jeff and nocturne in a lane by themselves buff them with the namora and then on the final turn if you want to move those points around you can definitely enjoy having three move cards in the meta because there's a lot of clog a lot of junk and it'll keep your opponent from being able to put rocks or negative cards into your side of the board and then just move that power out later 
Love having that in this list. Another crucial card is the Ravonna Renslayer. We have a lot of cards that are at zero or one cost. The Sage, the Ironheart, even the White Tiger. And being able to get all those cards out for one cost cheaper, one turn earlier, very, very important inside of this list. Next up, we have the three cards that just allow the deck to get completely out of hand. We've got the Wong, the Iron Lad, and the Odin. Now, when you initially look at something like an Ironheart, you say, well, it's just a three six if it's got three targets to hit. Yeah, but when you're triggering the ability four or more times a game, it becomes a lot more significant, especially when you can play that out for just two costs with the Ravonna Renslayer. Now, as I've said before, the Onreveal decks have been around since the beginning of the game. We would put all our power in the other two lanes and lose the Wong lane. That's not the case anymore. Now that we're running cards like Sage, or we're able to buff the Nocturne, Jeff, or Nightcrawler and move them around, we're able to compete for all three lanes. A Sage that gets multiple triggers is insane. Unless they have a Shadow King or a Shang-Chi to blow it up, you're going to win that lane. I mean, seeing a Sage at 28 or more power is uh, pretty common in this list, to say the least. Now, as I also mentioned, we have the Iron Lad, who honestly, outside of like maybe like Ravona and Echo, all the hits are freaking good. If you get a Wong hit, or an Odin trigger, and then you're able to do it again. My goodness, like I said, just completely overwhelming. All good hits. If you hit a move card, that's great. If you hit your Sage, your Iron, La you know, the Iron Heart. Yeah, not really a bad hit here. Maybe a Nomura, and you have multiple cards in the other lane, then it doesn't really do anything for you. But yeah, Iron Lad is solid here. And then also finishing up with the Odin, which just allows you to trigger things again. And if it's stacked in a Wong lane, yeah, just, you know, sit back and watch because you're going to be there a minute while all the unreveals trigger. So besides our move cards and our enablers, all the stats in the list come from our four on reveal cards. The Iron Heart, the Sage, the White Tiger, and the Mora. Namora being the only one whose cost can't be reduced by having that Ravonna Renslayer out on the board. But she's the newcomer and she comes in in a big way. She really spices up the deck, gives you some more play lines, gives you some more unpredictability, and just takes this deck up quite a bit. Now, something you can do if you get locked out by Professor X and you only got one car sitting there, you can put quite a bit of stats back into that lane with Namora alone. Or if you got a Jeff in a different lane, buff that Jeff up and then slide him over. To give an example of how out of hand Namora can get and what she brings to the table, optimal play line in a world where you're not going to get Shang-Chi would be Nightcrawler into a lane on turn one, Jeff into a different lane on two, and then that third empty lane, you would play Sage, Wong, Namora, then Odin, you would add 30 points of power to both Jeff and the Nightcrawler. So those two lanes would have 32 and 33 power in them. And then the Wong lane would have 16 points of power before you add the stats of Sage. You wouldn't know what Sage is gonna be, depends on what's in the lane. But yeah, you've got the eight, the six, and the two from Wong, Odin, and Namora. And then you're gonna put in whatever Sage is gonna get and she's gonna get massive. Yeah, things can get out of hand when you are left to your own devices and don't get disrupted. Now, I can sit here and give you all kinds of technical and optimal play lines and best case scenario and yada, yada, yada. But this is really one of those decks that until you play it and test it yourself, you don't get to understand just how crazy and powerful it is. It just knocks the pants, the doors, the socks off of everything when they're not running a counter to it. And let's be honest, a lot of people aren't running the counters to this. So if you can get over that hump, which is having Namora, you need to give this deck a shot. Absolutely loving it. Heck, if it gets super popular, you may finally start to see a lot more counters going. But as it stands right now, super crazy, super powerful. We're going to jump into those gameplay highlights. So as always, gang, y'all be good. Y'all be safe. I'll catch you on the next one. Do me that favor. Click the like button to help promote the channel in the video. If you're not subscribed, I'd greatly appreciate you considering it. Good luck out there on ladder. Hope y'all get that beautiful card back. It's a good one this season. See you around. Not gonna lie, every time I see LFG, you know, I'm an old World of Warcraft player. That stands for looking for group. I don't care what y'all say. It stands for looking for group. We, gotta play. we need Odin. We get Odin. We're looking in like pretty great here.
depending on where the tiger goes will be where we might possibly be playing namora although i don't know if that's come on so much white bro. i don't know if we can win this land everybody's playing the km best deck you know If they tried to prof Exus here, it wouldn't get off. One, two, three, four, five. We're getting at least five triggers on the Sage. My goodness, what is he playing in the meadow? If we played the Iron Lad, we'd be taking like the biggest risk ever. You know what? I'm a gambler. One in three. Calculated. Because the the untapped tracker is not working. Opponent snapped. I'm really not that worried about it. I mean, I've just, I'm not. That's, that's a little bit more rough. We don't want this to be Wong, right? We're going to take a chance here. If it's Wong, it's Wong, right? Not bad. I'm not sure what the, do we do this, right? And hope that Namora sticks, right? I guess we just do this. Please go left. Oh no. I'm okay with this. 
Well, we're gonna have a lot of points on the sage in the middle. I think we I think we got him. Definitely got him. Nice. No Odin, no Wong. We still got there. Victory. Still got there. Uh Sure. Don't really want to put the buff on Nightcrawler, but it is what it is. What we got? Schmoovin? Okay. Moving happens. If they don't play here right now, they're not going to get the buff. Well, they're playing that right now. Let's see what we get here. Kind of open for a Ravona. Spider-Man here. Yeah. I mean, what do they need to play? Stop. All right. Eight to lose eight, but I think we got him. Yeah. Two eight cubers in a row. Victory. Oh boy. This might be kind of, kind of good. I'll snap this. I'll snap this all day long. Put everything under here. You know, catch them off guard. We just need like Odin. Why are you playing here? You want to play in the Sinister London? Oh, okay. I get it, I guess. Oh. We want to we want to shut this off. And the move happens first. Remember, the move happens first.
Yeah, I mean, I guess we're just gonna Odin. I'm gonna regret this, ain't I? Are ye worthy? Oh, this is gonna be a, a white tiger, huh? We win the tiebreaker. We win the tiebreaker. Oh boy. 14 Sage. Goodness gracious. Oh, we're getting real full around here. Got to play here because of like White Widow and stuff. It's alright. I think we're okay. Alright. I don't do anything here. Breaking news. Why? Why? I guess if they get a really cheap dev, though, I can. They got a pretty cheap death, right? I mean, we're getting old, right? What was that? Oh, well, this just got destroyed. Are ye worthy? There we go. Victory. Hey, what did you think I was going to play? Leader probably wasn't the best option there. <laughs>